It's always a pleasure and an honor to be here. You can hear me? Okay. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be here. I was, um, when um, Pastor uh, Mike um, texted me, you know, um, my Thanksgiving day was awesome. Family and, oh, my goodness, the, the turkey and the ham, everything was delicious. The Cowboys kind of, kind of upset my Thanksgiving day. You know, it could have been, <laughs> it could have been better. You know what I'm saying? But, but um, Pastor Mike, when uh, he called me, I say, "Well, Pastor, I woke up Friday morning, and it was just some reason." I say, "Well, the restaurant on this side of town that I told him I went with Samantha and Tim." I say, "I want to. I'm going to that restaurant." You know, and and and, 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 and you know, you kind of say, "Well, I just go to the restaurant just to be down there." You know, just. Then Pastor Mike called me. I said, okay, God, thank you. So God was preparing me um, to be here um, with you guys. Um, I do pray that all of you guys had a very blessed and awesome Thanksgiving. This time of year, I just love it. I mean, I just love this holiday season. Amen. Praise God. And listening to Samantha and also... um, Pastor Mike and what they was talking about, and Pastor Mike was talking about launching out. Um, Samantha was talking about the changing your mindset. And I kind of think it kind of ties in with something that God had given me to uh, minister um, this morning. You know, because as we move into, what, about uh, 35 days, we'd be in 2019, and I do believe that God wants to do some awesome things for us in 2019. But before we can get there, there are some things, amen, that God requires us to do. You know, if we're going to launch out, and I think about um, in Hebrews, it talks about laying aside every sin and weight. Sometimes sin is something we can kind of really put our finger on, but sometimes there's weight. That hold us back. And the Bible also say we need to run this race. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to run a race and be effective. I got a whole lot of weights on me. And so I believe that as we get ready to go into 2019, there are some things that God want us to lay aside. There are some things that God want us to bring to the cross. There are some things that God want us to just give unto him. The Bible tells us, cast all of our cares upon him. Why? For he cares for us. Then it tells us to be not anxious for nothing, but in everything give thanks, you know, because this is the will of God um, in Christ Jesus concerning us. And so what I want to talk about this morning is what drives your life? And most dictionaries define the word drive as to guide, to control, or to direct. So I ask the question this way. What guide or what control or what direct your life? What is the number one thing in your life? I'm, I'm, I'm starting here, but I'm going to the end of the thing right now. God ought to be <laughs> the number one thing. And the thing I love about God is um, he told the children of Israel, he said, choose life, choose death. But then God said, he, he said, but choose, choose life. So what control our lives? What guides our lives? What, what is the thing that, that is driving each and every one of us? And like I'm saying, it should be God. Every life is driven by something, a problem, pressure, a painful memory, money. A lot of things can be driving your life. So let us look at what I like to say, you may want to say the five most common things that drives our life. Guilt. You realize guilt is something that drives our lives? Many people are driven by guilt. They spend their entire lives running from regrets, hiding the shame. Guilt-driven people are manipulated by memory. They allow the past to control their future. Some of us sometimes, we're allowing our past to control our future. And your past is just what it is, your past. And with God, God is not limited to our path. Now, when you look at our path, all of us can look back at our path. We didn't dot every I. We didn't cross every T. We made some oops, some things we're ashamed of now. 
But God realized that. When I bring all that to the cross, God say, I take it and I throw it into the sea of forgiveness. And I remember it no more. So we are driven by, people are driven by guilt. They are, they are manipulated by their memory. They allow the past to control their future. We're product of our past, but we, know, but we do not have to be prisoners of it. I am, who, I am I'm a product of my past. I'm African-American. That's, I, I can't change that. I had no say with that. But that's, but that's who I am. But even being African-American, I cannot allow anything to hinder me, to hold me down, to be less than what God has me to be. God's purpose for our life is not limited by your path. I look at different ones in the Bible. Debbie, I, 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 I look at Paul. Paul crucified, persecuted the church. That was his path. But God changed, turned that around. I look at Peter and I look, well, I look at the 12 apostles. And, and really, if I may use the term, when you look at them, they were just a rinky dinky group of guys. If I had to choose 12 guys, none of them would have been on the top of my list. But God looked beyond their path. God saw their future. And so for each and every one of us, I don't care what you I don't care what side of town you grew up in. I don't care how much education you have. God sees your future. And I want you to know that in God, your future is bright. Matter of fact, he told Jeremiah, I had a plan and a purpose for your life. And my God got a plan and a purpose for your life, even before you was born, even before your mom and daddy knew there was going to be a Mike. God had a plan and a purpose for your life. And the word of God said it was a good plan to do what? To bring about your expected end. So each and every one of us in God, he got a plan for our life, and it's to bring about our expected end. We might look at ourselves and say, uh, 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 I, 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 I don't know. When God called me into the ministry, I, could, I was almost like Moses. I could come up with all these. I said, God, I mess up the King English. I say was when I should say were. I don't dot every I. I don't cross every T. I don't put a common where a common ought to be. I don't put a period where a period ought to be. But God say, uh-uh, it, 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 it's not about me. And even with Moses, when Moses gave that before God, God said, I, I don't provide something for you. Earn. He, he'll be your mouthpiece. And so with God, he told me, he said, don't worry about that. My anointing is upon you. And I tell you right now, I'd rather have God anointed than to be able to be an eloquent speaker. Amen. I'd rather have the anointing of God upon my life. And, and, and when we look at it, when we talk about guilt, do you realize guilt is a gift of God that drive us to the cross of Christ and keep us on the right path and lead us to repentance and focus on him? Think about that. Gift is is a gift of God. Because what gift does, Tim, it allow me to realize, oops, I done made a mistake. Oops, I done did something wrong. Oops, I need to get closer to God. Oops, I need to bring that thing to the cross. I need to lay it at the cross. Give it to God. So I thank God for a gift. In a sidebar here, guilt is not the same as shame. Guilty is I did something wrong. Shame say I am wrong. Guilt say I did something wrong. But see, even if I did something wrong, Connie, I got an eraser and it called Jesus. So when I make a mistake, I can give that thing to Jesus and he can just erase it away. But even when I look at shame, shame say I am wrong. But even with that, I can give it to Christ. Amen. I can give it to God and God can change that. You know what I mean? See, it's almost like for me, uh, Stephanie, right? When I was born, amen, my parents wasn't married. So in a sense, I could say I came into the world as a, uh, a bastard child and there could have been shame hanging over me. But God said, you ain't shame. God said, I knew you was on your way. I knew you before Alma and Lynn got together. So, so I'm not a mistake. I'm whom God have me to be. 
Gil say, I made a mistake. Shame say, I am a mistake. Shame is the lie we believe about who we are that doesn't line up with the word of God. I encourage each and every one of you, find out what the word of God says about you. And as we get ready to go into 2019, you can go into 2019 with some boldness, with some confidence. Why? Because I know in my know what God has said about me. God say I'm the head and not the tail. God say I'm above and not beneath. God say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. All that I put in my hands to do, I shall prosper. Amen. I'm blessed in my comings. I'm blessed in my goings. Amen. I am the child of God. I am anointed and appointed. I am loved by God. Amen. So, 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 so when I go forth into 2019, I'm looking at what God has declared me to be. And I'm not allowing anything to hinder me, anything to, be to, to keep me from being everything that God has me to be. So this morning, if guilt is something that is driving you, we want to cast that thing aside this morning. Amen. That you can go forth in 2019 without that weight being on you. Amen. You you, you know, I, I tell people all the time, man, God is not so much concerned about your action as he is with the condition of your heart. As I go forth, yeah, I might make some mistakes, amen. But it's it, 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 it just like when my daughter was learning how to ride the tricycle. She might fail off, but she had to get back up on that tricycle and kept on until she got it. And so for some of us, even now, amen, I don't get everything right, Pastor Mike. Amen. You know, I still got to go to God and say, God, I didn't do this right. But I, I, I move forward from that. As Paul say, I'm pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So if guilt is holding you down this morning, I'm kicking it off you. Amen. I'm saying you're free and whom the son set free is free indeed. Amen. Something else to sometimes drive our lives is resentment and anger. Some people allow resentment and anger to drive them. They hold on to hurt mm. and never get over it. Yeah, yeah, I know so-and-so hurt you 20 years ago. My God, that's 20 years ago. Get over it. Release that thing to God. So they allow they, they allow the, 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 the anger and the resentment to hurt them, but some, they hold on to hurt and never get over them. Instead of releasing their pain through forgiveness, they released it over and over in their mind. And here's another sidebar. Forgiveness is to grant pardon for, our, for, for an, a remission of an offense or debt. So when I forgive somebody, I'm really releasing them of, the, of a debt. I'm telling them you free from the you free from the blame or the guilt. Forgiveness does not mean that a harm done to us was not wrong. Or that when we have been hurt, it does not matter. It does. But God is a God of justice. And wrong deserve punishment. What forgiveness does, what forgiveness does mean that I volunteer give up my right to repay a wrong and, and leave justice to God. See, what for, Darcy might hurt me, but what, but what forgiveness does, that Darcy, I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to release, uh, release you of that debt. I'm going to willingly give up. Amen. That. And I'm just going to put this in the hands of God. But see, one of the things that God tells us that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. But see, sometimes when somebody hurt us, we think we got to get right with them. I got to get even with you. No, no, no. Leave that thing to God. In some cases, when a person has hurt us badly, 
and that pain have a long lasting impact, forgiveness can be a process. Mm. Sometimes forgiveness is not an overnight thing. Forgiveness can be a process. If angry feelings reoccur or if a person hurt us again, we might need to confront the feeling, give them to God, and once again extend forgiveness. Somebody asked Jesus, say, somebody asked Jesus, say, how, how often should I forgive? There you go. So, so, what was, so what was he saying? Every time, many times, many times that you hurt me, forgive. Yes, forgive. I got, you know, I got, I got to let, I got to, in the point, I have to let it go. See, when we forgive, we enable the offender to be held accountable. See, if Connie does me wrong, amen, once I forgive Connie, now I'm able, I'm enabling her, amen, to be accountable for what she has done wrong. You follow me? But if she done me wrong and I hold it within myself, I haven't made her accountable to what she, she did because now I'm holding on to it. But when I forgive her, now I'm holding her accountable for it. Now God can begin to work on her. And I saw an awesome illustration uh, talking about when somebody hurt you uh, um, this past, last week. And come here, Dorothy, for a second. Punch me <laughs> on the shoulder. <laughs> so, so, so what happened? She hurt me. You, you see what I'm trying to say? But when I offer forgiveness, I'm building a bridge. I'm allowing it so that now that God can begin to work on her. I don't have to be the judge. Amen. To, to try to say, I'm going to repay. I'm going to do you wrong for what you have done for me. I'm leaving that in the hands of God. So when we forgive, we enable the offensive to be held accountable. Never take on your own revenge. But leave room for the wrath of God. I'm leaving it up to God to deal with you. I'm leaving it up to God to uh, just have his perfect beings in your, um, in your life. So anger feelings reoccur if a person hurt us again. We might need to confront the feeling, give them to God, and once again, forgive. Forgive. It is not easy, but with God, we can do it. Some resentment, some resentment driven people clam up. They clam up their anger. While others blow up and explode. Both actions are wrong. See, we get to the point that anger is not a sin. Jesus said, be ye anger, but sin not. Anger can be in an emotion, and sometimes we have to let that anger live. We have to let that emotion, right? oh, my goodness, Dorothy hit me. I'm, I'm so mad. I'm so mad, amen. I can, I can express the thing, but at the same token, I say, God, I'm mad, but I got to lay that thing at the cross. And I tell people sometimes, sometimes you get mad at God. Come on, you get mad at God. And so if you get mad at God, I tell them, go to God, Debbie. Go to God and say, I'm mad, God. You ain't do what you said you was going to do. Why are you allow this to happen to me? I am so mad at you, God. But then you got to allow God now to step in <laughs> and begin to minister to you. So sometimes when that anger comes, let it live. But at the same token, release that anger. Give it up. Give it to God. Let God move on your behalf. And then sometimes we, we, we blow up. You know, we, we, we make the statement, say, man, you don't, that, that, that's the last straw. And we explode. That's wrong. That's why I'm saying it, 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 if there's anger in you, it, Deal with that anger. Don't keep letting something fester at something, you know, you know, uh, keep on going and going. Man, just release that thing to God.
So it also um, both responds to unhealthy and unhelpful. So we need to stop worrying ourselves to death with resentment would be a foolish sense. Resentment always hurts you more than it does the person you resent. Mm. Resentment always hurts you more. Amen. See, I, I remember years ago, man, I was hurt. Matter of fact, uh, uh, someone used the, um, the phrase to tell me, say, man, they treating you like a dirty old ray. I couldn't just be an old ray. I had to be a dirty old ray. <laughs> And when they told me that, I, I cried. I, that, I mean, um, you, you know, since that. And, and so when it came time, a man to forgive in that situation, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go back and, 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 and forgive. But someone told me, say, Rudy, that's for your benefit. It ain't, it ain't about them. This is for your benefit to go back and forgive. And so I had to go back and I had to say, I forgive you. You know, because see, sometimes in life, when 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 someone does you wrong, amen. Sometimes we allow certain things. So even if somebody hurt me, sometimes I got to look at the situation and say, "What did I do to allow this?" You know what I'm trying to say? But anyway, I had to go back into that situation, and I can, and I had to forgive. And when I told you that sometimes, sometimes this whole thing with forgiveness might be a reoccurring thing. Man, I walked through my forgiveness with this situation, and, and I was driving along one time, and God brought something up and it about the same situation to my mindset. I'm saying, God, why in the world are you bringing this up now? And God said, because I'm trying to show you where you have come from. And if I showed you this earlier, you couldn't forgive me. I mean, you couldn't handle it. And that was another situation. I had, to, I had to go back to, I went back to this church, and I didn't know that this person was there. And when I went back there, Dawn, and, and, and this person was there, and I went to this person, they was reading the newspaper, and all they did was hold the newspaper up. I had to reach my hand over the newspaper and say, and, 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 and speak to them. And then when I left there, I said, God, why did you tell me to come back here? Because on my way, I was leaving a, a prayer meeting. And God told me, say, if, if you pass this place and if you see a certain car, stop. I didn't want to stop. I saw that certain car. I kept on going. But I got down to the light. I had to turn back around and come back. But then I want to tell God, say, God, why did you have me to go there? You know that God said, this wasn't about him. It was about you. I'm trying to show you where you are. So sometimes for us to forgive, amen, it's not about that individual, it's about you. And so if we go forth into 2019, we don't want no unforgiveness. We don't want that thing to be what drives my life. I don't want any weight. I want, I want to be free to worship God. I want to be free just to, oh my goodness, just to rejoice before the God. See, I believe when David was coming back with that ark and it say David was dancing with all oh, his might. See, I don't think that David had a care in the world, amen, even though his wife was up there criticizing him. David said, man, I'm just rejoicing in the Lord. And in 2019, God want us to be able that I can rejoice in God. No way, no shackle, nothing holding me back. My mindset is all I want to do is just glorify God. All I want to do is just magnify God. God, you are my all in all. And the river in 2019, whatever is taking place, whatever somebody might have done to this ministry, you let that thing go. That in 2019, river can say, we're going to be everything that God have us to be. What's going to drive us in 2019? Amen. The kingdom of God. <laughs> What's going to drive me in 2019? Loving people. Man, that's my prayer every morning. I say, God, I don't accomplish nothing else. I just want to love you and love people. And if I do those two things, I believe I accomplish something to the glory and to the praise of God. Those who have hurt you in the past cannot continue to hurt you unless you hold on to the pain through resentment. So let us avoid resentment, unforgiveness, envy, believing that they are self-destruction, attitude. 
Man, I ain't, I ain't holding on to no unforgiveness. I'm releasing it. I'm letting it go. There's a, this is another sad bar, if I can find it here. Uh, thought this was a good time. If I can come. When you're talking about forgiveness, John Sanford says this. He talks about the, the Gethsemane prayer. But listen to this. Our prayer should be something like, Lord, in compassion, identify me with the heart of my offenses, with his hurt and wound. Bring to death in me that which would declare him as sinful and me as, okay, I'm trying to navigate this thing, and me as righteous. I'm not better than him. I am one with him at the foot of the cross. I cry out. Forgive us. Set us free from the trap of hate. In all one unmanmanship. Enable me to identify with the person. Identify with the person whom you created him to be. Restore us, O oh Lord. So and again, when somebody have offended me, there's a prayer that we can pray. I, 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 I'm, I'm praying for that individual. I'm not looking at that individual fault because, see, sometimes people, they, they, might, they might hurt you because there's something wrong with them, something going on in their life. It's not about you. It, it, it's, something, it's, something, it's something about you. For example, you could come from a well-loving family, and this individual have come from a family that was uh, broken or, or dysfunctional, and they see that in you, and so they, so they might hurt you. But the reason that they're hurting you because you got something that they desire to have. And so that's why when you can look beyond them hurting you, amen, and, 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 and ask God, God, help me to identify, help me to see what is going on with John life. What is going on in Murray life? It makes a difference how we will look at them and even how we will judge them. Some people are driven by fear. Fear is simply faith in reverse. Faith bring me to God. Fear carry me away from God. The reason sometimes that the, the reason that the enemy attacks us is because we have faith. You don't have to have a whole lot of faith. The faith is uh, uh, just like a mustard seed. But he come up against you because you have faith, because he realized the Bible tells us that without faith, we can't please God. If I'm not walking in faith, I can't please God. So you cannot please God walking in fear. Fear is a self-imposed prison that will keep you from becoming what God intended for you to be. Fear may be a result of some traumatic experience. Trauma come in many forms. Some people do not realize they have experienced trauma. Physical like a heart attack, loss, or death, divorce, trauma of unmet or unrealistic expectation, growing up in a high controlling home, uh, 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 being violated, raped, robbery, molested. See, so sometimes fear, we allow certain things to hinder us, and, and sometimes we don't, we don't realize what it is that is hindering, what it is that is keeping me from being what God have me to be. And I realized in some of the things, it was just like for me. I was brought up, my parents, uh, about 12, they, they divorced. And, and one time I was in a household, there was six boys in the household, but it, 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 when my parents divorced, it was me and a biological brother, okay? And the thing about us, when years go by, when I look at divorce, Divorce affected both of us, but in different ways. So what took place? Because th th in a sense, that was a kind of trauma when my parents divorced. I mean, because really, we, you, you look at it, this, this wasn't really, I guess, in the mindset of God. So, so, so it, it, I really now become traumatized. When, when I was born, my parents wasn't married. Then when the second brother came along, he got the junior. Now my parents divorced. Oh, my goodness. So you see how you can be 
traumatized and, and the thing that guides your life because it was me. I picture my dad as the bad guy my whole life. I ain't going to be like him. And you know something, Eddie? Everything that I was doing, I was being just like him. <laughs> you know? And I had to get free from that. I had to let that, I had to let that go. So that sometimes we, can't, we cannot allow things, regardless, um, regardless of the cause, field drive people, often, field driven people often make great, often miss great opportunities because they are afraid to venture out. Instead, they play it safe, avoid risk, and trying to maintain the status quo. So sometimes something might happen to you in your past, and you won't venture out now. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, you, for example, somebody, somebody could rob you. They, they could have they robbed you. And, and, and so everything now in your mind says, am I going to be robbed again? Am I going to be robbed again? Oh, I, when, when, it, when, it, when, it, when it get dark, I don't know if I want to go out. Uh, 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 I don't know if I want to go to a shopping mall or anything. And so that's the thing that's driving you. But the thing that we have to put into place, amen, if God is my protector, God is watching over me. I'm kept by the power of his hand. Amen. So if God is ordering my steps, if God is blessing me, if God is keeping me, Man, I don't have to walk in no fear. So if fear is driving you right now, in the name of Jesus, we come up against that thing. Man, I kick it off your property in the name of Jesus. I will not walk in fear. I'm going I'm to walk in whom God have called me to be. I'm going to. And see, sometimes when I talk about fear, keep you from venturing, being what God have you to be. Man, it was almost like uh, Joshua and the children of Israel. God said, walk around this big wall. My goodness, they walk in fear. Man, I'm walking around this big wall. This is foolish. No, no, no. They got the soldiers up there on, on, on top of the wall. But they venture out. They trusted God. God said, walk around in six days. On, on seven days, but on the seventh day, let out a shout. Man, when he let out a shout, that wall came trembling down. Amen. So see, but if they didn't do what God had them to do, if they allowed fear to hinder them, they would have missed out on the blessing. When Jehoshaphat and three nations, Chris, rose up against them, Jehoshaphat said, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Three against one? This ain't fair. This don't look good. But my God, they sought God. And God told them, say, go out. The battle is not yours. Go out. I don't pave the way. But if they had looked at the circumstances, if they had looked at the situation and stayed in their comfort zone, they would have never reaped the benefit. They would have never reaped the victory because as they were moving out, worshiping, praising God, God was working on their behalf. See, God see the beginning and the end. And when he got to the place of the battle, all he had to do was just pick up the good. So sometimes let, us, let not fear hinder us. See, there are some things, River, that God has placed in your pastor's heart. There are some things God has placed in the heart of this ministry. Don't allow circumstances, situations, amen, control you, keep you from being everything that God have you to be. I see this front row is empty, amen, but you believe God. You trust in God. You say, God, it may be empty now, but God, you are more than able to fill this seat to your glory and to your praise, amen. And if I come next Sunday and it's still empty, okay, God, that's an, I'm still trusting you. I'm still believing in you. God, you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can ask and think. Don't be moved by what you see. Amen. Trust God. Amen. Believe God. God can do the impossible. Some people are driven by materialistic. I just got two more. Their desire to acquire become their whole goal of their lives. This drive to always want more is based on a misconception that having more will make me happy. But the Bible says if I gain the whole world 
and lose my soul, whatever it prospered me. Man, he tell me, say, Howard Hughes had, he had money on top of money. But this dude was miserable. Money do not buy happiness. Money, in a sense, is a certain peace with God that money don't bring. Jesus said, peace I give unto you that the world can't give unto you. And sometimes I think I got to have more. I got to have this. No, no, no. What I need to have in my life is more Christ. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these righteousness things should be added unto you. I want Christ in my life. It's nice to have a big, fancy car. I'm not against a big, fancy car, amen, if, if, if you want a Benz, amen. But if you don't have Benz money, leave the Benz alone. Because that Ford Escort can get you the same place that Benz can get you. All I want something to get me from point A to point B, got a little air in it, got some heat in it, amen, little sound system, I'm a happy camper. You know? So having more, it doesn't really do it. I just, I just want more of God in my life. So the misconception that having more will make me more happy, more secure, more important. Not true. These things only provide temporary happiness. They only provide tem- Do you realize I can go right now? to the Chevrolet dealership down here on Chester, buy me a Suburban, 2019, fully packed, amen, uh, uh, cushion, I mean, um, leather seat, amen, heated seat, some of everything. But when I pull off that lot, that, the, uh, <laughs> the value of that thing dropped. You see what I'm saying? It dropped. It was, um, I was tickling one time, it was, um, I heard somebody say that when we leave this earth, we can't take, we can't take any of those worldly possessions with us. And as a matter of fact, they were saying one time it was at a, at a funeral, and people was, I can't remember what said, but they were writing checks, just throwing it in the, they, they were throwing it in the, you know, throwing it in the coffin, throwing money in the coffin. Somebody came back later and said, well, hey, I'm, and, and they got it, and they actually said, well, they can't take it with them. <laughs> you know, a check ain't going to do you no good where you're going. <laughs> so I want to put my value in Christ. I want to just, I just want to trust him. Um, uh, your value is not determined by your valuable. The most important thing that you have is your relationship with God. How the God sees you. That's the, th- that's, that's the, that's the most important thing in life. How the God sees sees me. That's the most valuable thing that I have is my relationship with God. And last, some people are driven by the need for approval. Mm. They have um, in Elijah House 201, it's a course uh, class, and they say being um, um, performance orientation, I think it is. And they say some people are driven by peer pressure, always worrying what others might think. Unfortunately, those who follow the crowd usually get lost in it. Peer pressure. River, God has not called you to be like the Father House. God has not called you to be like East End Assembly. God has not called you to be like the Potter House. You can't look at those things and, and, and then determine that I ain't got nothing going for me. You can't look at those things and be intimidated by what God have for you to do. God got a plan and a purpose for this ministry. God got a plan and a purpose for each and every one of our lives. And, 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 and sometime in life, I can't be what someone may, else may desire me to be. I got to simply be what God have me to be. Someone told me this one time before, because I was worried about this. He said, Rudy, you don't have to be confirmed, uh, be confirmed by man. You're already affirmed by God. See, some of us, we try to please, you know, we try to be like this one. We try to be like that one. I, oh, my goodness, I just want somebody to, to, to like me. Let me share something with you. Everybody's not going to like you. They ain't like Jesus. <laughs> so 
if they ain't like Jesus, how do you think that everybody going to like you? For whatever reason, somebody just not going to like you. Your ears too big. The color of your skin. You ain't got enough hair on your head. You can't sing. <laughs> you can sing. <laughs> For whatever it is. But I can't worry about what somebody else think about me. I have to know in my know who I am in Christ. And I have to be what God have me to be. And the river, you, this congregation have to be what God have it to be. God got a plan. God got a purpose for this ministry. And as you go forth in 2019, Pastor Mike, don't, don't, don't be intimidated by what's going on at the church down the street or the church around the corner. My only focus is, God, what you have for the river. What you have for the river, we want to walk in it. Because what God has for the river, there's a certain anointing, there's a certain uh, 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 power that God has given, amen, the river. Amen. See, I don't found out something, and I found this a long time ago, the five-fold ministry. I don't see preachers that God have called them to be an evangelist trying to be a pastor. You know what I'm trying to say? A calling on their life. Man, but you walking in the I, I knew one guy, Dorothy. Man, this guy, if you talk about preach, he going to preach a house down. But when you go to his church, you say, this guy ain't got nobody in church. Wait, this guy preach, he ain't got nobody in his church? But then I realized God didn't call him to be a pastor. God called him to evangelize. So I'm going to tell you, stay within your lane, River. Stay within your anointing river, because if you stay within your lane, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, the journey is going to be fruitful. The glory of God is going to be upon you. The anointing of God is going to be there. Man, you're going to accomplish what God has for you to accomplish. Amen. Don't worry about anybody else. See, the whole thing of it is, I can't worry about the way that Pastor Mike preached. I mean, we might look alike, you know, you know y'all see the resemblance there, you know, trying to say, you know, but I can't, we, but we don't minister the same way. He has to be whom God called him to be. I have to be whom God called me to be. Forrest Gump say, life, amen, is a box of chocolate. And that's what it is, this whole thing is, man. God created a box of chocolate. Dark chocolate, white chocolate, chocolate with orange filling in it, chocolate with raspberry filling in it, a whole box of chocolate. And, and so when I buy this box of chocolate, I want all the variety. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, God, I mean, you know, God has created. And so, God, and so when we look at the body of Christ, God has created us that way. Everybody is not like everybody. Somebody told me one time before, God told me not to be like you. All right, um, huh. <laughs> what we got here now? <laughs> what we got here now? But see, I know what they was talking about. See, I like to joke. I like to play around. I believe the scripture, Jesus said, I come that you have life, that you have it more abundantly. This individual, they want to be straight in there. But the said. The Lord, you know, religious and, and, and all this kind of man, I, I want to enjoy life, but to the glory and to the praise of God. So God didn't call you to be like me. God called you to be you. And young people, God called you to be you. Amen. Whatever school you're going to, Thomas Dale, Manchester, be you. Be that anointed vessel that God has called you to be. I ain't worried about if they got hell joy. I got what I got. I told the young people when I was pastor, my goodness, go to the dollar store. Buy your dollar pair of jeans if you can. Sow destiny on the back of it. Amen. And sow the river on the back of your jeans. Amen. Go to school with river on the back of your gene. What are you talking about? Man, I'm proud of who I am. I thank God for who I am. Let me hurry up and finish here. My wife might say I'm too long, yeah? So, we, we, we have to get to the point. Being controlled by the opinions of others is a guaranteed way to miss God. 
See, when I worried about what Baal said about me, I'm really not hearing what God said about me. Because yes. I'm hearing, I'm, I'm so re- focused on what Mary said about me. And I ain't hearing what God said about me. I want to hear what God says about me. Because at the end of the day, what God says about me is the thing that matters. It's the thing that's going to count. Because, again, God have his thoughts and purpose towards me are good thoughts, good purpose. God's thoughts and purpose concerning this ministry are good. And Pastor Mike, I'm right with you. Man, I'm so excited about what God is going to do in 2019. Y'all just keep lifting up the banner. Just continue to glorify God. Continue to magnify God. Amen. What this uh, movie Field of Dreams says, if you build it, they'll come. Man, if you continue to worship God, they're going to come. So being controlled by others is a guaranteed way to miss God. A person is suffering or uh, just kind of driven by being a, per, uh, a perform orientated person may lose their true identity. David said in Psalm 139, 14, I'm fearfully and marvelous made. Also in Jeremiah 29 and 11, my God, God said, I got a plan and a purpose for your life. Man, see God, what is his plan and his purpose for your life? Amen. My daughter here, amen, seek what God plan and purpose for your life. Amen. God plan and purpose for your life might be different from somebody plan and purpose over there. But you realize that his plan and his purpose for your life is a good plan. God saw you even before the foundation of the world. And I'm just feeling in my spirit, God say there's anointing upon you. My grace is upon you. I've given you everything that you need, that you can prosper, that you can be all that I have you to be. So when you go to school Monday, tomorrow, amen, you walk, you, you might used to go to school kind of. But tomorrow you walk with your head lifted up. Be ye lifted up, O ye gay. Amen. Be proud of who you are. Thomas Dale, right? Man, when you go to Thomas Dale tomorrow, man, they, they might have saw you um, Wednesday or Tuesday of last week when you went to school. But you're going to mile a certain glow. Be proud of who you are. You're anointed child of God. You loved of God. And I'm so glad, amen, that I am loved of God. Rick Warren says this, I do not know all the keys to success, but one key to failure is the key to please everybody. I can't please everybody. If I'm trying to please Pastor Mike and then Pastor Mike get mad at me, I run over here and try to please this sister. And then I run back over here and try to please it. Man, you know, I will run myself ragged trying to please everybody. I ain't trying to please everybody. Again, everybody ain't going to like me. You're going to find some reason not to like me. You might not like me because I'm a Redskins fan, but that's your problem. <laughs> you, know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Amen. I, <laughs> I just want to please God. I want to be everything that God have me to be. So when we move into 2019, those are just some reasons. Let nothing, let nothing drive your life but the goodness of God the grace of God, the mercy of God. God is saying unto you, my sister, cast all that stuff away. Whatever it is that's driving your life right now, God is saying, I'm more than able to meet your every need. And I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to believe in God. So whatever it is that's driving your life, cast it aside. I'm letting go. I'm taking it all. I'm taking that weight off. But Debbie, as I take that weight off, I'm putting on my garment of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Whatever was driving me before, amen, I'm putting on my garment of praise. I'm standing up here with you guys now with my garment of praise. Hallelujah. Can't sing a lick. But man, God said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I'm making a joyful noise unto the Lord. I'm glorifying God. God ain't worried about if I can't, if I don't sound like Donnie McCurkland. God said, I just want to hear Rudy. Amen. God would say, look, Michael, look, Gabriel, look at Rudy. Can't sing a lick. But boy, my son is giving me his all in all. Amen. He praising me with all that is within him. 
So let's lay it aside. Kick it aside. Let's be what God has for us to be, to his glory and to his praise. And my brother, I'm so glad that you finally took the time to finish that book. Amen. Amen. I, I, I sense even from when you gave that testimony, there was some procrastination. You know, you're kind of putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. But my God, I don't even know what the book about, but I know it's going to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Amen. Because I believe that it, God was orchestrating your writing. Amen. God put some things on your heart. And see, here's the thing for each and every one of us. God had put some things in each and every one of our hearts. God give us a desire so that we can desire. My sister, back there, God has given you a desire so that you can desire that thing. Go out for, reach out for that thing. Go for it. Pastor Mike was talking about miracles. Do you realize miracles are walking up and down these aisles? And see, I'm sitting right here by this young lady. Miracles are walking up and down this aisle. My miracle will come back. Oh, come back here, miracle. I claim this miracle to the glory and to the praise of God. You want a miracle? I reach out there. Great, yeah, there you go. Grab that miracle. See, she got it. <laughs> she got that miracle. So in 2018, River, I got to... Um, I got to stop. I see my wife looking at me, y'all. Y'all might not know the signal, the sign, but I notice it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes you can kind of just, you know, you kind of just, you kind of get excited. But look, lay all that stuff aside. As you go into 2019, man, I'm pressing towards the mark. I'm running this race to the glory and to the praise of God. I don't want nothing to hinder me, nothing for keeping me from being all that God had me to be. Okay, Doris, I see you pulling me. Okay, Doris, I can feel it. 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 That's all, folks. 